Old Testament lesson for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany comes from Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning at the fourth verse. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I anointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to, and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build, to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fully, even as I am fully known. 
And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise to the God. A reading is from Luke's Gospel, the fourth chapter. And he began by saying to them, Today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well, spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. I tell you the truth, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel when leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed. Only Naaman, the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. And then he went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to teach the people. And they were amazed at his teaching, because his message had authority. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Chris, we're saying peace to you from God our Father, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue our trek through Epiphany, again, we're reminded the Epiphany season focuses on the many manifestations of Christ's glory, and then also points us to the fact that he would have us uh, show that glory to others. Missions, evangelism. You know, as we go far as um, manifestations of the glory of our Lord, they come in different shapes and forms. Some more obvious than others, some, right? The healings, the miracles, the raising of the dead, these sort of things, of course, manifest who he is, his glory as the Son of God come in flesh. But there are others that are maybe more subtle, but just as important, maybe in some ways even more so important, because they point us to God's holy word. Remember, Jesus is the word incarnate. There is the inscripturated word of our Lord, which he has given to his people, but that all points to him who is the word. What it's all about is Jesus, the Word comes, become flesh. And we see this concern uh, for the Word and this manifestation of His glory through the use of words in many ways, what we've heard already today. We see that manifestation through the presentation of our Lord that we heard at the beginning of the service that we will be celebrating, not on Groundhog's Day, but on the presentation of our Lord, February 2nd. Um, Nobody knows Groundhog's Day. Nobody knows the presentation of our Lord. Uh, but uh, an important revelation, a manifestation of his glory. Not that Jesus himself seems to do anything. He's brought there, at, he's only 40 days old, to the temple in fulfillment of the law of God as given in the Old Testament. And, and yet there is a manifestation of his glory because there happen to be two people there who witness to his glory. Simeon. Moved by the Holy Spirit, comes to the temple and says of this 40-day-old baby brought there by parents who aren't all that wealthy because they sacrifice the offering of the poor. And he says, ah, my eyes have seen my salvation. What a manifestation that he would say this of this child. Even so that Mary and Joseph were made his body. But here is the Christ. 
And he confesses it with great joy, even though his eyes may be telling him something different. But because he has the Lord's word on it, the Lord's promise on it, he believes it. No matter what his sense is telling him, no matter what the circumstances say, this is the Savior. And he can be part of peace. We do the same thing, by the way. This is why the no dominus is at the end of the Lord's Supper. We sing it traditionally, right? My eyes have seen my salvation. All I saw was bread and wine. All I tasted was bread and wine. But my eyes have seen my salvation. Because this is where the Lord has placed himself, where he's promised to be, where he gives his very own body and blood for our forgiveness. And that, too, is a manifestation of his glory to those who will believe. An epiphany. A foretaste of the things to come. And of course, all the manifestations we see during the Epiphany season are foretastes of things to come. The healings and all the miracles that he does is to show what? That he has come to be the redeemer of the whole world and to overturn the results of the fall. To remove sickness, to remove sadness, to remove death. Finally and ultimately, in his kingdom when it comes. And we get these foretastes, and no greater foretaste in the marriage feast of the land, that foretaste for that, as we come together and receive him as he promises in the body and blood of Christ. Of course the church sings the note divinus after receiving the sacrament. Manifestations by others. And Anna speaks highly of him and marvels at him, and uh, she sees the redemption in this little child who, for all the world's sake, is not all that impressive, and trust the Lord's word. And we are called upon to trust that word, to uh, cling to it, and to hear it, and to say, where has it directed me? Where has it said that the Lord is going to be there for me? And of course, we've heard that in the songs we've been singing all day, right? Um, did you notice the connection between baptism and confession absolution? Luther would say that when we do confession absolution, we are simply living the baptismal life. We are applying to ourselves the promises of our baptism. We are drowning the old man. And as we hear the gospel bringing forth the new man in righteousness, and we allow ourselves to see things the way the Lord sees them, not what our tell us, not what our senses tell us, not what the world tells us, but how God sees things. It corrects our vision. It points us to what all the manifestations are pointing to, Jesus, our Savior. Um, he does this through his manifestations, even through his word. And those he sends, and again, those he sends aren't always all that spectacular. Uh, the Jeremiah text, as you read that, uh, that was read at my ordination, read at most ordinations. I remember sitting up front and those words being read and tears coming out of my eyes because I'm going, yeah, what am I doing here? Who do I think I am? Too young, don't know nothing, and I'm a sinner. How can I represent the Holy Spirit? And the Lord's word to all of his shepherds is the same as to Jeremiah. Don't say that you're a child. I have appointed you. Um, do not say, well, child. you must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to. Yikes. And none of us have it as bad as Jeremiah. Poor Jeremiah has to go into captivity with the Jews because of their disobedience to God. But I jokingly often say, don't mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be pastors. And then I did. But, uh, yeah, God speaks through earthen vessels. And we try to remind ourselves of that, to, to focus on the word and not the individual, not the person who's saying the things, right? We cover them in robes. Um, black, if you have not heard this before, uh, the clerical collar is a witness to that, right? Black is the color of death, the color of sin. I'm a sinner. You don't have to look too far to find the chinks in my arm. And then we blue up, we wrap white around our voice box. 
says the thing they've been given to do is holy. The only thing I'm good at is speaking God's word. The only thing to be judged for my office is the speaking of God's word, the proclamation of law and gospel to God's people. It doesn't matter who the speaker is, but is he being faithful to God's word and speaking that word faithfully? And it can be a Jeremiah who is young. It can be a Peter who denies his Lord three times. It can be a Paul who persecuted the church. But when the Lord takes us, he does what? It's the fulfillment of this, uh, what he says in Jeremiah. He reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I put my words in your mouth. We confessed that a few moments ago with absolution, right? You remember it? Open your bulletins. Take a look at this, right? I shock you. Can you really say something like this? Uh, the very, the very middle, right from the statement goes, and then turn one more page. What do you believe according to these words yet? I believe that when the called ministers of Christ deal with us by His divine command, and particularly when they exclude openly unrepentant sinners from the Christian congregation. And absolve those who repent of their sins and want to do better. This is just as valid and certain even in heaven as Christ, our dear Lord, dealt with us himself. And a little further down, I ask a question to those involved in all the liturgies. Do you believe the word of Christ's forgiveness? I speak to this holy word of self. Holy words. Manifestations, important manifestations, for coming in humbly. Nonetheless, manifestations of God's love for you and what Christ has done for you. The absolution spoken has no power on its own, but it's the power of Christ and Him crucified and proclamation of what He has accomplished and done for you. And what He has promised you in the waters of holy baptism, what He promises you and me when we gather two or three of them together, right, in His name, I'm in the midst of them, regardless of what our eyes and senses are telling. And boy, we need that, especially really hard times, right? Because our eyes and senses may be telling us something totally different. But he remains true to his promises. No matter the reception. He comes, and it's kind of interesting in the, uh, the gospel lesson, right? Um, by the way, you have Paul in, in making a point that, not, that you know, not all are apostles, but God gives these certain things. He calls certain individuals to them his word. And then Jesus comes and what? He's already got the problem of what? He's in his hometown. And we're reminded that people will not always want to hear God's word. They will not always want to hear it. In fact, we confess, right? We must confess, insofar as we have the old Adam in us, we don't want to hear it sometimes, right? But we have to hear it. The salutation, as I told you before, reminds us of this, right? The pastor salutes you and says, the Lord be with you. The Lord is with you. You are his people. You are holy. You are covered in the blood of Christ. And the response, and with thy spirit, confesses holy ministry. Holy not because of the individuals, but because of why they come, what they bring, the word of Christ. And they come and they speak that word into our ears. They come and deliver the body and blood of Christ into our mouths. That we might have the certainty of salvation. Um, this is why the Lord comes to us in so many gifts. We were singing this song, the gifts are freely given, right? In so many ways. So many ways. For you and for me. Because of Christ's great love for us. Manifestations of that glory. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus always. Amen. Amen.